Hi friends and welcome to the second part, my second vlog in my Spiffbo 9 coaching journey. I'm not a coach. Do I think I'm on the voice or something? My judging journey. <laughs> If you have never heard of Spiffbo before, don't worry. There is a video on my channel that will explain it, but I'll give you the brief rundown. Spiffbo, or SBFBO, is the self-published fantasy blog-off. This competition is hosted every single year. This year is its ninth run. It's hosted by Mark Lawrence. He has a whole blog page that you can go to in order to keep up to date with what's happening and all of that fun stuff. I will link it down below. Essentially, it opens 300 books are sent in. When those spots are filled, those 300 her books get shuffled into groups of 30 and sent off to 10 judging groups or bloggers. And then those 10 groups read their 30 books. They get them down to one finalist that they nominate for phase two. And in phase two, we all read each other's finalists and we score them out of 10 and there is a scoreboard. Mark Lawrence kindly asked me to be a judge for Spiffbo 9. So I've been doing that. I've been enjoying it. And this is my second vlog. You can go back and watch part one now if you'd like and come back and watch part two. Or you can watch part two and then watch part one. There's really no way to do it besides whatever works for you. In this video, I have five finalists left to read and review, so I will be doing that. I will be reading and vlogging my experience, so you will get essentially two to three updates per book from me. I update as I go so that you can see if my feelings change throughout the story and things like that. I'm really excited to see if there are any surprises in store for me. Last year, both Umbral Storm and Small Miracles really surprised me with how much I loved them, so I'm still waiting to feel those feelings again, and I'm really hoping that part two does that for me. Hello. I'm on chapter nine, so I'm about 70 pages into the Wickwire Watch. So far, I'm enjoying this one. I feel like this is the surprise I wanted from this competition. This kind of reminds me of the feelings I had for Small Miracles when I first picked up Small Miracles of just being pleasantly surprised about the atmosphere and where the story takes me. They are not the same book in any way, but just like last year, Small Miracles was not a book I thought I'd like, and then I ended up really, really enjoying it. And I feel this way about the Wickwire Watch. I'm really enjoying the tone of the story. The narrative narrator is really good. I'm really liking the audiobook. I am listening to it like 10 out of 10 for the audiobook. I think the production quality is really good. I think the voices are matching up to what characters should sound like in my head. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. I'm liking learning a little bit about the world. I am wishing we would learn about it a little bit faster. Like I'm getting a little greedy and eager to learn more, but I think I got to a point in the book where I'm about to learn like a lot, which is really exciting. And just overall, I'm having good vibes with this. It's not my normal fantasy book at all, but I'm enjoying it it quite a bit. So I want to keep reading. I'm working on my genre blanket currently and I'll keep you updated. Okay, I've made it about another 60 pages into this. I can't lie. I'm getting a little frustrated at the lack of answers. Who would have guessed? I'm just getting annoyed by the amount of times we ask a question and we get the answer. I can't tell you this right now. It's like, why even ask that question if you can't tell me? And I just want answers and it's like annoying me that I don't have answers. But of course, I'm not super far in, but... I'm hoping that I get answers ASAP. I'm being greedy. I want the answers. I'm intrigued by the questions, so give them to me. Good morning. I've just made my coffee and it's time to update you on the Wickwire watch because I made it to 50% last night. Overall, I'm having a good time with this one. I think I said last night that I just like the narrative tone. A little more cozy than I'm normally used to, but it is very engaging to listen to in my opinion. However, few complaints have happened throughout the last 200 pages. I am struggling with characters a little bit. As we've gotten further into the book, we've just done random POVs in random characters' heads as we go, but those characters don't sound that different than our two more main ones who also sound a lot alike in my opinion. So although I'm enjoying like the narrative tone, I do wish there was a little bit more uniqueness to each of the characters because I end up having to search for a name to figure out whose head we're in instead of just being able to automatically feel the vibe. I think this book struggles with pacing for me. The last 100 pages have been my least favorite part of this. I thought we were at a point where we were gonna start getting answers and the story was gonna really suck me in. And instead we started to like follow the tasks of this boy. And I think it was in order to build the world building up. And I think it did that quite well. Like I do understand, I feel like what this community looks like, but it did that in place of an engaging plot moving forward for me. And for a hundred pages of a 400 page book and already having a hundred pages of what I think should have been set up, 
it made me struggle. Like 200 pages of the book and I'm still not entirely sure where this book is going to, which I think is just a thing that you've heard me say again and again and again within these Spiffbo videos is that like I am a plot driven reader and I'm looking for the plot. And I do think this one has a plot. I do think it's got an interesting plot, but I think the pacing is hurting the plot. Overall, I'm still intrigued. I'm interested in knowing what is happening, but I just recently learned that this is like a seven book long series and I have a feeling this is gonna be a setup book and I'm not going to be as happy with how it ends. I think I'm expecting a lot more answers than this book is gonna give me because it's gonna be a setup book, which is why I typically don't read series that long. Three to five books for me. I feel like that is my ultimate book series length. Longer than that, there's way too many books and there's a lot of unneeded traveling normally. Shorter than that and I don't get the depth that I want. Are you ready for my final thoughts on this one? Unsurprisingly, I have mixed feelings upon this. There are things that really, really worked for me within the story and then there are things that just didn't hit. Things that I think were very intentional and will work for other readers but just didn't vibe necessarily with my reading taste alignment. One is that this is a lot slower paced than I wanted it to be. I think I could have gotten rid of a hundred pages in this, which I feel like over these Spiffbo vlogs, I've been saying that I'm a chunky book reader. So the fact that I'm thinking this should have had a little bit less pages is a little crazy, but I stick by it. It just felt like it didn't do the pacing justice for me. Maybe let's just jump right on into what I gave these things to make this flow a little bit better. For characters, I'm giving them a 7.5. I really enjoyed our main character. I thought he was easy to follow. I liked his tone. I did think it was pretty consistent. My problem became that I felt like I couldn't differentiate between him and the other characters very well like they also had the same tone he had. I struggled connecting to the characters when I was supposed to. There is 200 pages of this where we're getting character backstory and because I didn't know what character we were talking about most of the time because they sounded all the same to me they just had different like job titles. I didn't care. I didn't feel this found family aspect that I think a lot of people talk about within this story. I didn't get that personally. Plot I'm also giving a 7.5. I think my main complaint with the plot is the pacing. I actually like where this story goes but it goes from like a murder mystery to a cozy fantasy to like this weird cool horror fantasy thing. It does that at weird pacing and intervals for me like the cozy fantasy in the middle took way too long. It was like 200 pages of just watching our MC go do chores and get to know people and I was just so done at that point. I think I could have enjoyed this book so much more if that was 100 pages shorter because I just I was bored. I was honestly just bored and that's a me thing. If you're a cozy fantasy person you probably will like that a lot more than me. It was really about getting to know characters, but I already kind of talked about how that went for me. The writing I am giving a nine. This is the strongest writing I feel like I've read so far in SBFBO this year. I think it felt polished. It didn't feel like a debut. I actually don't know if this is a debut or not, but if it was, it did not feel like one. I felt like the word choice worked really well for wherever we were in society at that time. I really feel like the writing was clean and was a real big strength of this. And it did really help me enjoy this. It was very pleasant to read and the tone really worked for me as well. The setting I am giving an eight. I really liked the world aspect of this. I thought there was a really cool setting happening and politics at play. I used setting as world building and setting just so you know. I just use this writing system for more than just fantasy books so I call it setting but it does also equal world building and fantasy books. I think this could have scored higher if I just understood the magic system a little bit more. By the end of this book I still don't think I I understood how the magic really works, but I am really intrigued by it. And I think it did a really good job of keeping me interested in the magic, which I think is also a complaint to pacing. It's like, I had questions that I wanted answered and they didn't get answered until like the last hundred pages or so. And I was waiting 300 pages for things to like move on in like the fantasy area of this book. So maybe the fantasy being so strong, like the world building and setting being so strong hindered the pacing in some aspects for me because like I was so curious about what was going on world building wise that I wanted more of that earlier on. But I do think that the world building, the setting was really interesting in this, very unique. And I think it was pretty vivid. Whenever we went to a new location, I feel like time was spent to 
make me understand where I was and what it looked like and how society ran. I do think world building was a really big strength of this and it felt like it was showing me and not telling me. I really enjoyed the world building. And for enjoyment, I'm giving this another 7.5. I enjoyed the first 100 pages and the last 100 pages a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Just those middle 200 pages were like my enjoyment definitely lowered. So it just feels like a good 7.5 for me, which in the end puts us at a 7.83 rating, which will be an eight for SBFBO. I think that's a pretty good rating. I enjoyed this one and would be recommending it to other people. I'm intrigued by what's happening. And I think if it wasn't seven books long, I would be continuing, but I just know I, I can't commit to that seven book long series. Like I just, I didn't love this enough for seven books personally because I don't like long series. But if you are someone who enjoys long series, I definitely would recommend picking this up. The ending had me really intrigued by what could happen next. I'm not writing off reading the rest of the series, but it's not going to be a priority. I think that's a good way to talk about it. I'm 25% into Myrtle at Spinder Manor. And guess what? I'm enjoying this so far. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one. Murder mysteries aren't my go-to in like movies or anything to watch. So they're also not my go-to to read. Like I'm not really a classic literature reader, but I have enjoyed them in the past within fantasy stories. For example, City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett has a murder mystery and I liked the murder mystery element in that one. So like I wasn't... I didn't think I would hate this, but I wasn't sure that, I didn't think that I would gravitate toward this either, especially with the more historical setting of it. I think the world and the magic is really cool in this one and it's like adding to the story quite a bit so far. We're essentially following our main character who follows a group that is on vacation together to Spindle Manor, where she has one reason and one reason only. She's there to kill someone at that manor. We then realize exactly why and it's because of this demon creature that like inhabits people and kind of becomes them but is actually a demon. So she's trying to kill that demon creature which is essentially one of them so we have to figure out who it is and all of that. The first 25% is definitely a lot of setup. I wish the setup was a little bit more engaging however I feel like it's a murder mystery. If you watch a murder mystery movie the first like 20% is just meeting all the characters and like getting to know their backstory, which is not the most engaging part for me. It's going to be more fun, I think, as I try to guess who it is and figure out all those things. I'm actually really excited to get to reading this and hopefully we'll update you with some good thoughts in a little bit. I have made it to chapter 17 of Murder at Spindle Manor and to be honest, I'm still really enjoying this one. I'm actually quite shocked by how much I'm enjoying it. I'm flying through it. It's really easy to read and I think it has a lot of elements that I really am enjoying. It feels pretty fast paced. I'm never left being bored by any mystery or anything because there's constantly new things happening, which I think really works for something like this that is set at an isolated setting. I also think the isolated setting is really spooky and fun with a lot of interesting creatures and like world building still happening within it. Like yes, we're not getting an expansive world building, but we're definitely still seeing things about the outside world, which I think is really cool. I'm really actually quite engaged in this one. So this is doing really well for me and hi Mickey. I finished this one last night and honestly, I'm really impressed with it. I actually really had a good time with this. It reads really quickly and I think that it sets out to do what it does and it does it really well. It feels like a murder mystery set in a fantasy world and I think I really like that blend because you have the murder mystery to keep you intrigued with the plot and there is a plot there, but then you also have like this cool world building that gets to be shown. And yes, being the reader I am, I could sit here and tell you I wanted to know more about the world and the creatures and all of those things. I don't think that affected my overall enjoyment because I was told enough about the world that I was still really engaged and not just like thinking about how I wish I was learning more about it because the plot was so fast paced and there was so much going on that I definitely like was always engaged with what was happening on the page. I would say my main critiques for this is there is a lot of dialogue in this. There are some pages that are just complete dialogue and the setup of the characters at the beginning of the book was a little boring for me, but I also think those are things that happen within murder mysteries quite a bit because of just what they are. Like you have to have that 20% of just hearing the characters' backstories. There's no way around it. The dialogue thing I'm not 100% sure about. There were pages of non-dialogue, but I just noticed that when we were in a room together, it was just one character speaking, then another character speaking, then another character speaking, then another character speaking. And it didn't flow nicely with like a narrative as well. It was just 
mainly dialogue. I think that's pretty much my only complaint. I mean, I guess I could mention the characters aren't like the most well-rounded characters. They definitely fit a little bit more like tropey archetypes, but I think that works in a murder mystery, especially if you're having one where more people are going to die because this is a fun story and not a story you want to be sobbing about when someone dies. So you're not really connecting to anyone besides the narrator and that's okay because that's kind of like the purpose and the intent. So yeah, overall I had a really good time with this one. I think I will be continuing on in the series. I didn't think I was going to say that but I really enjoyed being with our character and her partner. I really liked the ending of this too. It, it left me feeling very satisfied. So I think I might actually read the sequel of this, which is really exciting. For my overall scores for it, I'm giving characters an 8.5. I think that they were pretty strong. I do think that we could have learned a little bit more about them as people and extended past those archetypes just a little bit but overall I really liked our main character. I do wish I had learned some of her backstory a little bit earlier on so I cared a little bit more about her but I enjoyed it. The plot I'm giving a nine. I think that the pacing was pretty good. There's about one scene where I was like mm, I don't really think this needed to, to exist. I also think this could have been a little bit longer to like flesh out some of these things a little bit more but overall I really enjoyed where the book went, the plot, the pacing, all of that. I'm giving the writing an 8.5. I'm docking some marks for that dialogue issue. I just think that you could maybe set the atmosphere a little bit more within those talking spots. I'm giving the setting a 9 because I do think that the atmosphere of the story was really really good. I felt the vibes of this old manor with like the creaking wood. I felt like the cool creatures. I really liked learning about things like that. There is some like politics that you learn about within this as well and like because those aren't the focus of the story whenever I got those tidbits I was really excited. They felt very natural to get but not expand on. If I read the sequel I would like to know a little bit more about the politics and stuff but for this first book and the murder mystery setting and this like house isolated setting I think it really worked for me. I loved the world building within it. There's some really cool things in this including the creature that she's like out to kill that was a really cool tidbit for me and so my enjoyment is an 8. I actually had a really good time with this one. I enjoyed it quite a bit which I was not expecting so that ends up putting the total at an 8.5 so for Spiffbo this will be scoring an 8.5 for me which is really exciting. I'm really excited that I found I think a book that will really sit with me in the rest of these finalists. I definitely think that I'm excited and happy that I read this and will be recommending it quite a bit. I think it's something really like almost cozy but not cozy at the same time because people are dying and this is the type of cozy fantasy. I mean, it's not really cozy I guess but this is the type that really works for me I think because it had such a good plot too and I don't know I really liked this. I'm really really impressed with it. Okay next on the list I've made it 14% into The Last Fang of God. I am really intrigued currently by the plot of this and the gods. I think that that could be really interesting. I'm liking the setup. My complaint so far is that the writing style is too much to the point. It needs a little bit of wordiness, a little bit of description added to it because at this point it just feels so tell not show because the writing is very much just like this is how it is and I would like to feel a little bit more emotion and wonder as I read but I'm hoping that will change as I get more invested into the story. I have made it to 50% and I don't know what to say. I have really mixed feelings on this one. I don't really know how I'm going to talk about it. This is probably the fastest I've read a Spiffbo book this year. I am really intrigued with the concept of this one, but I'm not necessarily loving the execution. I think that it needed to be longer. I mean, call me a broken record at this point. Every single book I feel like I read besides the one that I gave, I've said needed to be longer. I love me a chunky book, okay? I just do. I just love it. That's why my final is just like a 600 page book because like I just love the depth you get from that because I have so many questions about what is happening here. I wish I knew our character better. I want to know their backstory. I also am loving the magic system and the setup of the politics with the gods. I love that. I love the ideas happening in here but they're not given the proper page time in my opinion and there's a lot of dialogue telling happening. Like things are explained to us a lot in dialogue and I just want to like see the wonder of the world in this one and I'm not seeing it but like I'm also so engaged with what is going to happen. Like I'm really interested in the plot line in this quite a bit and so the plot is keeping me reading and I'm sure I'm gonna finish tonight and update you in the morning. I think I'll be staying up reading this which is really good for my enjoyment level. 
I am actually shocked by how stressed I am for this ending. I am 88% in and I'm not ready to read what's about to go down. I really liked the action-packedness of this story. I do think that the pacing is a little rough at times, maybe a little too fast. I wish we spent a little bit more time understanding and learning things, but I also was intrigued to always figure out what was happening. I enjoyed this one a lot more than I thought. If you don't know, the story follows two characters, a father and a daughter. The father is the last of his kind and he thinks that he is going to die that way. But however, the god comes calling and calls for his daughter and this ends up putting the father and daughter in a interesting place because if he doesn't listen, his daughter's going to die. But this is the path that he's never wanted for his daughter. And we see a little bit of a journey to understand why this god has finally come calling when he said he never would, essentially. And I'm really liking the gods at play in this. I think the gods are a really fun factor to this. I do wish I knew more about them and the world and how the magic works. But overall, I'm having a good time. I just finished. And I did not realize this was a standalone and it's changed a lot of my thoughts because a standalone has to do things better than a first book in a series in my opinion. And I have way too many unanswered questions for a standalone. But I'm gonna update you with my ratings and final thoughts in the morning because I need to sit on this quite a bit I think. Okay, it's been a little bit. I've thought of my feelings for Last Fang of God and I have updates for you. We're gonna jump right on into my ratings and I'm going to explain my thoughts as I go because this was a really complicated and confusing book for me to write. I am giving characters a six in this one. I really feel like we just hit the surface with the characters. I think if I was gonna pinpoint this book's weakest spot, it is the characters. I never felt a strong connection to the characters. Each character truly didn't stand on its own for me and I never was like worried about them. Even though I was stressed about the plot of the book and the story, I really wanted to emotionally feel the emotions of these characters because they were going through such a stressful time and I feel like I never felt that. Or even their bond, I really wish I had connected to that a little bit more as a daughter. I feel like I could have because there is a message in here about a father-daughter relationship and just trying to be productive and love your child but sometimes doing it too much and being a stubborn child that doesn't appreciate what your parents do for you. There is a beautiful message within there but if I had cared a little bit more about their bond and their relationship I really think that we could have expanded on that story quite a bit. The plot carried this book for me over the characters. So that being said I'm giving the plot an 8. I really enjoyed this plot. It kept me going. I kept reading it. I think that everything felt intentional. There are moments of like things that I feel like you wouldn't think I would enjoy like learning to hunt. We do watch the characters do that but it felt very intentional for the reason that she learns to hunt and we're told that that's the reason she's learning to hunt and I really enjoyed that all the small moments equaled something. We didn't just have small moments for the sake of small moments which sometimes can happen. But like the small moments led to greater, bigger moments, which I really, really like when a story does. It was almost like a little bit of foreshadowing, which I really enjoyed. I do think that the plot felt very rushed at times. The pacing of this story was a little bit off for me. We'd have like really big dramatic epic scenes and then a really chill scene and then a dramatic scene and then a chill scene. And I think that this needed to be a little bit longer in order to help with those pacing issues. The writing I'm giving a seven. It was clunky at times for me, but I still overall enjoyed it. I don't really have a lot to say about it. It just felt like a seven. Most of the time I feel like I can really pinpoint what didn't or didn't work for me, but this was really just like, it didn't have enough oomph to it, but I still really liked it. But there was definitely some word choice for me that wasn't like my favorite at times and some things that weren't as clear. So a seven for the writing. The setting, I'm giving a 7.5. If this was a series, I'm telling you right now that I think I would have given this an 8.5. It lost a whole mark for me being a standalone because I can forgive your world not being fully developed in your first book of a series. I can forgive these elements and be like, we're gonna get that as we go. I was really intrigued and really interested, but this being a standalone for me, it didn't hit 
I think that there were so many unanswered questions, things that I was curious about, things that felt a little murky, but I was like, in later books, they'll be better explained. But I really liked the setting. Like, I thought it was really, really interesting. So if this had been a first book, I think it would have scored a whole point higher. This just didn't feel well fleshed out enough for me to be a standalone novel. Honestly, I could forgive probably more in other categories too if it was a start of a series but as a standalone it just felt a lot more murky than I would want a standalone to be. It just kind of sucks because I was really excited for it to be the start of a series. However, I did give my enjoyment a 9. I honestly had a really fun time reading this. If this had been a start of a series, I 100% would have picked up book two. Like 100% I was interested enough to see where it goes to learn more about everything. So I did give enjoyment a nine. I think that'll shock a lot of people. I was very much invested in what was happening in this story and the storyline that was being built, which does put The Last Thing of God at a 7.75, which rounds up to an eight for Spiffbo. I was hoping that this would be a standout for me and I really did enjoy it. I would definitely be interested to try more from this author, specifically a series in the future, which is pretty good. I'm about 35% into A Rival Most Vile. Honestly, I think you're gonna get this update and an ending update and that's it. I just can't see myself having a lot to say about this one. I truly think that this book sets out to do what it does. I think the writing is really good. I actually think the character work is pretty good. I think the plot is pretty good for what this book's plot is supposed to be. However, I am so bored in it. It is not a story that works for me in any shape or form. I think that it is good for people who will like this type of story. Like, I fully think that I would suggest this to anyone who wants to read a cozy book with a little bit of romance, relive those like Legend and Lattes vibes. I didn't like that book either. I just find that type of story very boring and it doesn't do anything for my own soul. However, I think that this is really well written. Like, I think that the purpose of this story is exactly what it's doing. I think it's doing every category well for the type of book it is. I'm just not enjoying it because, like, I don't care. Like, I'm like, okay, give me, give me some death. Give me some epic adventures. Give me something more than just these two shops having a rivalry that's going to end up in a romance and is very just, like, cozy vibes. But if you're a cozy fantasy kind of person, I really think that you could like this. It's just not for me. So like, I don't know how I'm going to talk more about this story. I don't even know how I'm going to rate this one yet. Because like, how do you rate something that you think is doing things incredibly well, just not what you want out of a story? It's going to be a very difficult, difficult rating for me, I think. We'll see you when I'm done. I have such, not really conflicted feelings, but very interesting feelings on this one. Because... Everything I said to you earlier, I stand by. And I'm just going to jump right on into my ratings because there's something really unique about how I rated this book, I feel like, and special about it because I think it does everything it sets out to do really, really well. It's just 100% not a book for me. If you don't know what this book is about, I don't think I explained it, we're following our main character who has a potion shop and he works on this little quaint street that's like a community of shops together when someone opens a shop across the street from him that also happens to be a potion shop and now they're going to be rivals competing for the ultimate potion shop on this street. I knew going into this, this was a romance as well. Cozy fantasy romance, that was the vibe of this story. So I ended up giving characters a nine. Honestly, I think the characters were really, really strong in this book. There's two main protagonists that you follow. You follow two different points of views. They're both men. I understood both of them very easily. I felt like when I switched POVs, I knew instantly whose head I was in. They had quirky personalities that were separate from each other. I also think that the side characters had a lot of personality. I knew who all the side characters were and what shop they ran and like little quirky things about them. And I think the characters were written really well. I actually gave it a really strong character rating. The plot, I'm giving an 8.5. I think that this is a plot that it's supposed to be. Like, this is this is the plot it's supposed to be. And there is a direction that the plot moves forward from the beginning of, like, rivalry to ro romance. I think that we could have known more about the romance early on. There was 
an issue really knowing whether this was romantic or friendship rivalry. I think that intentions could have been a little bit clearer earlier on in the story, even though I knew that it was going to be romance because I don't know why I knew. I think someone told me before I read it that it was going to be a romance. But I think if you didn't know that it was going to be a romance, it wasn't clear until a little bit later on. So I did dock a little bit of points for that. But overall, I think it does the plot that it's trying to do really well. The writing I gave a 9. I thought this was really clean writing. Like truthfully, I had no issues with the writing at all. I enjoyed it. Enjoy is a not the right term because you will see later on. But I thought that if this was a story that I was interested in, I would really, really like the writing. Like I appreciated the writing style. It felt atmospheric at times. It felt perfect for the story it was trying to tell. The setting I'm giving an 8. This, just like Murder at Spindle Manor, I did want more about the world because I think the world was actually really interesting. There was like all these different like demon things and potions and people going on adventures and things like that. So I was interested in knowing more about the world, but I understood that that wasn't the point of this story and that me expecting epic fantasy style world building is not the proper way to rate a book like this. I should say expecting, but me wanting it. So although I was really interested in it and I wanted to know more, I also think it did a really good job of introducing the world building and the setting and those elements within the story that it is, within this like isolated setting. Because we are a little bit like, we're not isolated within one house, but we're isolated within this like small town. We're not going on these like big epic quests or things like that. We're not spanning different POVs that are like across the world. We are like in a little town, a little... This is not needed. We are in a little town, a little isolated, and I think that we did a good job of still making the world interesting. And even the small town was interesting. Like, I did like the elements of the setting. I do wish that we had learned a little bit more about the shops. I think it could have been a little bit more atmospheric at times within each of the shops. However, I think that it got like a cozy vibe for me down really, really well. I feel like looking at all those ratings were like, Cassidy, last time we talked, you were literally bored. <laughs> and this is the thing. I think that this book is extremely good at what it does. It's just not for me. I'm giving my enjoyment a three. I was incredibly bored in this story for my own taste. I think that it is so well written. I think that if you are a cozy fantasy kind of reader, this is for you. If you loved Legends and Lattes, pick this book up. I could see this book having lots of like spin-off tales, like we're going on an adventure, we're at the wand shop, we're seeing what the mayor's daughter wants for her next birthday. Like I definitely could see this spanning a bunch of cozy fantasy sequels and prequels and just like little standalones within this like cozy world and I think it will work for a lot of people. Like I think this was such a strongly written book. However, I literally couldn't care about it. Like I am not a cozy fantasy person. I didn't really like Legends and Lattes. I feel like I gave that a generous three stars because I feel like I didn't want to like rock the boat at the time. Like now I would tell you that I think it's a two star. Like, like if I'm being honest, I'm just not a cozy fantasy kind of person. And like, I just thought this was boring. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because it's so well written. Like truthfully, if you like cozy fantasy, please read this. So overall, it is getting a 6.75, which is rounded up to a 7. So it actually still ended up scoring a really good writing from me, despite my enjoyment being so low on it. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. I want to be a cozy fantasy girl, but I just know I'm not. Like, this just did not hold my attention. And that's all I gotta say. So we have one last book and let's move on to reading it. So I have started Hills of Heather and Bone. I'm actually about 50% into this one. I really struggled with the start of this one. I've been sitting on it for a while. I started it a while ago. I was reading about a page and then putting it down. The writing style just really didn't work with my brain. It's really a purple prosy in my opinion and very descriptive in a like sensory way. And I think that'll really work for a lot of people. Doesn't really work for me. I'm not someone who's looking for that in my reads. I typically like a pretty plain writing style. I think that that's pretty clear here, like Sanderson or Stavley or I don't know who else, but <laughs> I'm blanking. A very like simple writing style does like truthfully really work for me. Definitely I'm still not loving the writing style. It's still definitely something that's not vibing with me, but I did think the world was really cool. I am interested in her magic and I keep wanting to know more about it, but I don't really get the purpose of this book. I'm literally 50% in and I just want more out of it than what I'm getting I think is the problem. It's very like 
slice of life almost. We're watching this girl just handle her trauma, this couple handle their trauma together. And I think a lot of people really appreciate what this book is doing. But for what I want out of a story, it's not escalating far enough for me. It's not diving to an extreme to have a beautiful discussion for me. It's just kind of like life. Like it feels like what real life is in a fantasy world. I think that lots of people will really appreciate that, but it's not something I'm looking for in a book. I'm really reading for escapism with discussions about real world things, and I'm not getting a lot of escapism within this story, even though I think the magic is really cool. But I also just like want to understand it better than I am. So yeah, we're really doing a lot of traveling too. And I, I don't really like traveling books. So this is really just like not a story for me. I feel like I've said that a lot. I definitely so far throughout this journey of SBFBO, this is the first time of me being a judge, but I definitely understand why everyone picked these. I think that these are all books that I could see someone really enjoying. I understand that I'm just not the reader for them, which I think is really beautiful as Spiffo as a whole and I think what its purpose is is to share with you good books. Whether they work for you or not is very subjective. Reading is subjective. What I don't like purple prose but some people love it and don't like simple prose. So like there is just elements of subjectiveness that happens in something like this but the idea is we're saying these are well written you should try them and see if they work for you and I think that that's what this entire journey has done. I'm gonna finish this one I'm interested to see where it goes and we got a couple of trigger warnings at the beginning and we have hit some in like small amounts but I think I was expecting this book to be darker than it is because of those trigger warnings but the trigger warnings are there for a reason like I do think that they're in there there was so many of them that I really thought it was going to be a darker story than it already is especially because I saw people saying that the cover misrepresents the book and I personally think the cover has represented the story quite well it feels almost like a cozy romance about these two surviving their life together in a non-cozy way at times but like a very realistic way to how romances are like there's highs and lows and goods and bads and things like that which is what I thought when I looked at the cover that this was going to be that style of story and then I read the trigger warnings and heard people saying that and so far I feel like it is what the cover tells me I don't know I I'm gonna keep you updated later on tell you how I feel about things. Welcome to the part where I picked probably the worst book to end on and I'm so sorry that I did that. I always hope to end vlogs on a high note. This was not a high note for me. This was my least favorite read of SBFBO, which sucks. It really sucks. I need to tell you what this is about. We're essentially following a married couple who have magical abilities. One of them though has a magical ability that is hunted down and destroyed. It's seen as evil. So they are hiding her ability and they tend to be on the run quite a bit when people find out about her ability. That's literally what this book is about. It's about the couple. Right off the bat, I can tell you this was not a book for me. This is a book about a character, a character journey. It's a, it's a character study. It's about self-introspection. It's about really diving deep into who you are and finding yourself, which seems to be a thing that a lot of people like. It's just not a thing that I like. So please take everything I say with the realization that this is my own opinion. This is not a story for me. I think it clearly was not a story for me from the very very first sentence. I'm gonna jump into my ratings, talk to you then about the book because I feel like that is the easiest way for me to do it. Characters, I ended up giving a seven. For a character-driven book, I really didn't connect to any of the characters. This is really a book that's only about our one character. I definitely docked a decent amount of points for the side characters. The side characters within the story exist only to further our main character learning about herself. They themselves don't stand on their own feet. They exist for our main character for the purpose of telling the main character something. And I really dislike that in a book. I want my characters to have personality. I want to care about all the characters, the side characters, and just didn't feel like the side characters mattered at all. Our main character is written pretty well, I won't lie. She reads a little bit younger than I think she is, but overall, you understand her a bit. You're learning to understand her with herself because she doesn't even understand herself. The plot of this, I'm giving a five. I want to sit here and tell you that this book does exactly what I think it sets out to do really well, the way I did with Rival Most Vile. However, my problem is that I think that this book continually tried to be something that it wasn't. The pacing on this is really the main issue. We have this like cozy romance with a little bit of dark elements to it, but then we have these points of high action scenes where it felt like the plot was being further carried and the 
back and forth between these this slice of life style and then this high action didn't work for me. It made me feel like the plot was all over the place. It made me feel like the pacing was all over the place. It made me want more epic plot because we got tidbits of it and I was just like, don't put them in there if that's not the purpose of the book, at least in my opinion. Like, that's what didn't work for me. I also could see it working for a lot of people, having slow and then action and slow and then action. Just my personal own way that I like a story told is a lot more linear than what this is. This was a lot more up and down. The writing I'm giving an eight. I'm gonna be honest right now. Truthfully, I hated the writing. It did not work for me. Too flowery at my brain really took a lot to comprehend it. However, that's a very, very, very personal thing. And I think overall it was written well, just not my style of writing. The setting I'm giving a 7.5. I think that it does a really good job of describing the setting and the uh, world itself. Like I know what things looked like. So it did score a little bit higher because of that, but I did take some marks off just because I also don't feel like I got to understand the world building and stuff. The gods, the magic system, why they were truly being hunted, things like that. Especially because her being hunted was such a big part I wanted. Not that we didn't get it. I wanted to get it more in detail than we did. So I think I just struggled with a lot of the world building, but the actual setting itself like felt very well fleshed out and we were in a character who has been hiding her whole life so it does make sense that she wouldn't know a lot however I wanted to learn more with her about like the magic system and things like that specifically like how the magic system works and then my enjoyment I'm sorry I'm so sorry I gave my enjoyment a two. I didn't like this. I told you I didn't like it. It's just not a me story. I was so incredibly bored throughout it. I didn't care about this soft journey we were going on. The relationship itself, because I didn't care about the side character that is the husband. I didn't have any feet in the relationship to cheer on the relationship. There's a goddamn chicken that was just so annoying in my opinion and didn't need to be there. It was supposed to be a comedic relief, I think, but it was just very, very repetitive. I did kind of forget to mention the writing and the plot. I found very repetitive in general. It just was like the same thing again and again and again until our character learned the lesson. So yeah, I just didn't have fun with this one, which ends up scoring it a 5.25. So for SBFBO, it will be rounded up to a 5.5. And there you go. That is the end of my Spiffbo 9 judging career journey. Thank you so much to Mark Lawrence for asking me to be a part of this. I had a lot of fun doing it. I'm sorry I ended it on such a low note, but like I really did have a lot of fun. I learned a lot more about my reading taste, I think specifically doing this, and I definitely found a few that I'm going to continue on. Murder at Spindle Manor really, really surprised me, and I will definitely be trying more from that series, so that's really exciting. I'm really excited to see how all the other judges sit. There is the link to the Spiffbo 9 board down below. Hello. Thank you everyone for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me some kind of flower emoji. And then if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my books are on my book, Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon, all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.